Welcome to Second Baggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve. Today we're going to be going over T clocks inspections. This is going to be a pre ride inspection that I like to make sure are done to all of the bikes pre riding season. If you're fortunate enough to live in a place that doesn't have seasons, then at least do this twice, maybe three times a year, especially if you're riding all year long. Here in Illinois, we obviously have seasons, so we get, you know, six, sometimes seven months out of the year, we have good riding weather, and then the rest of the time they just kind of sit here. Now here in the last couple of weeks, we've had this hit and miss kind of good weather, um, like today. Started out 30 something degrees this morning. It's gonna be, you know, like 75 this afternoon and sunny, so perfect riding weather and over the last couple of weeks jumping on the news Facebook here and there I keep seeing all these posts of these riders having wrecks a lot of bikes going down and it makes me sit there and wonder people aren't doing their t clocks inspections after their bikes sit there all winter they get a nice warm day their buddy calls hey let's go ride they jump on the bikes and they take off now i'm not saying that's what caused all these accidents i saw a lot of bikes out yesterday and it just made me wonder how many people stopped and took 20 minutes to go over their bike after it sat there all winter and uh, just, just uh, go out fire it up let it warm up and take off so those are the things that we're going to be talking about today down in the description, I'm going to put a link to this right here. This is a T clocks inspection list. I did a video on this several years ago. And just like anybody else, um, over the years of working on motorcycles, you figure out a couple of other things that I missed in that first video that I'd like you to check, especially if you have touring model motorcycles. Uh, this is a very generic, basic list. Now there's several different versions of this on the internet, but they all pretty much are all the same. This is from MSF, the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. Uh, I've printed this off. It's two pages, but I always keep a copy of this out in the garage. And when I'm going over my list, grab an ink pen and you're gonna check all this stuff. And since we have several bikes in here, I always write down at the bottom what bike it is. And then on the back side, we'll write notes on this blank area if we need to. But but you and I are going to go over this entire checklist today and we'll get a little bit more detailed about what they're talking about versus the generic information that you read on here. Any tools that I'll be using today, I'll have a link in the description down below as well, especially if it's a specific tool to what we're doing or what we're checking. You can click that link. It'll take you over to Amazon. You can check it out there, but you can purchase these tools anywhere. I just want to make sure that I provide a link to you guys so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So just so you're familiar, the T clock just stands for tires, controls, lights, oils, and chassis. But each one of these is gonna cover several different things in that category. So we'll take the checklist with us, we'll move the camera over here, and we'll start with the tires. Now we'll start with the T and T-clock, and that's tires. It doesn't just cover tires, though. It covers your tires, your wheels, your brakes, rotors, anything in the front and rear area of the bike that's spinning, right? That's what's gonna be covered under the T. Now you don't have to have a lift table to do this. You can do this right on the jiffy stand, but it's gonna be a lot easier to do uh, your wheels and tires if you get it up on a jack so you can spin your tires you don't have to roll it and keep getting down on the floor and looking so obviously easier if you have a jack but you want to get the front end jacked up you want to get that tire spinning so what i'm going to do is pull the valve stem up here and that's going to be my marker right so i make sure that i go all the way around the tire we're going to be checking the center and the sides all the way around if there's any flat spots is there any bulging is there any cracks dry rotting anything like that so make sure that you go all the way around i like to use both hands when i'm doing it i can actually feel the tire as i'm spinning it right and i'm going to tell you something when we were out in sturgis my fat tire front end i had an avon on that thing in the center of my tire right here lifted up about three quarters of an inch it split from the sides right? Because you have a center and then you have sides. Your center is usually a little softer and your sides are a little harder, but that thing split and lifted up. And I was riding around on that like that. And I just happened to have somebody walk by and point it out. And uh, we got it immediately changed that day. And that tire was less than a year old. So take the tire inspection seriously. Just because this has a brand new tire on it doesn't mean that there can't be something wrong with it. Okay. The next thing you want to do is check your tire pressure. If you got one of these bad boys right here, it makes it a lot easier, especially on these baggers where you got to get up under your saddlebags. You get one like this. This one's from Harley, but you can pick these up anywhere. But this allows you to just kind of reach in there and check it and see it right. And it holds it until you hit the button and release it, right? It'll hold the pressure on there until you can pull it out and look at it. If you got a regular tire pressure gauge, that works as well. Just when you're pulling that tire gauge out, make sure you're not bumping, you know, the end and changing the pressure on it. That's it. Not all tire pressures, not all all bikes are going to be the same. There's a lot of argument and debates in the forums about whether or not you should go by the uh, tire 
the pressure that says on the tire or you go by what the bike says to put it in. Hopefully I can clear this up for, uh, I try to in a forum sometimes and it's like arguing with a brick wall. On the tire, that is the maximum amount of air that's allowed in that tire. That's not what you fill it to on your motorcycle. You look in your owner's manual or right here on the side of the frame and it'll tell you what pressure to run your tires. Right here on this sticker on the frame, it's gonna tell you front tire 19, 3.5, that's the size of the tire, and 36 PSI cold. The rear's an 18 on this ST, and it's gonna be an 18.5, and it's gonna be at 40 PSI. And then you'll see the debate, well, I'm not running a stock tire and wheel, I'm running a 21. Well, I'm running a 21 on my street glide over there, and you know what pressure I put in that tire? what it says on the frame. The tire pressure on the tire is the maximum amount of air that can go in the tire. Not necessarily what you're supposed to run it at. You go by what's on the frame because that's what the manufacturer has designated as the tire pressure to give you the best ride and the best handling possible out of that motorcycle with wheels and tires on it, right? So always, always, always go by the frame. Now, if your wheel has weights on it, go to where your wheel weights are. If those wheel weights have been on there for any amount of time, if you've lost one, you will be able to tell. You can see where it was stuck. We'll start with the valve stem again as our marker point. We're gonna check both sides. Rotating, we're gonna check inner, outer, especially out here. You guys that living in the city, riding these things around, big potholes and stuff like that, these cast wheels crack and chip super easy. They also bend really easy too. So make sure you check your wheels both sides. Brake rotors, super easy to check. They're right here, right? Spin them, feel them. Make sure you can look down here and make sure they're not chipped, cracked. You wanna make sure that they're not warped in any way. You'll be able to tell if it's warped because when you're spinning it like this, it will hang up in the brake caliper, right? So if you feel any kind of tension rolling that through the brake caliper, check for your rotors being warped. You wanna make sure it's not all grooved up from your pads being bad and then cutting grooves into your rotors. If you wanna take the extra time to check your brakes, that's super easy too. You have two bolts right here, that's it. You pull those two bolts out right there, this caliper will pull off and you can look at your brakes and inspect them. Really easy to do, takes like two, three minutes to do it. Put it back on, put your bolts back in, torque it down to spec. Make sure that you get a service manual for your motorcycle. Service manuals are abundant on the internet now. If you don't have a service manual for your year bike, you just haven't looked hard enough. You don't have to pay for them anymore. Everybody's got them out there and they're free, right? Download one to your phone and make sure you have, it's got all your important torque specs in that service manual. When you're spinning your tire, I want you to listen for any kind of crunching or anything going on in the bearings. If you've got bad bearings, sometimes you can hear them crunching, right? Another way to check your bearings too is to grab the top of the wheel and the bottom of the wheel and you're gonna push. You're just going to push like this. You're gonna push here and you're gonna push here. If you have any wobble in there at all, you got a bad bearing. Do not ride the bike if you have a bad bearing because once that thing goes, you're not gonna be able to control the bike. And once again, just because your bike is newer doesn't mean you can't have a bad bearing. It's very important. I see a lot of these people buying these brand new bikes and they think it's indestructible because it's brand new. And that is not the case. I've seen bikes like this with less than six months on them and they have bad bearings, bad tires. Check this stuff, it's very serious. Then we're gonna check the actual function of the brake. Each individual brake should be able to stop the bike on its own. So the, if I just grab the front brake, it's gonna stop the bike. If I just hit the rear brake, it's gonna stop the bike, right? So you want to check those too. Make sure that your brake pedal and your hand lever are not spongy. I know a lot of people that don't flush their brake fluid. It's very important to do that. Brake fluid gets moisture built up in there, that stuff gets frothy, and it just doesn't work as well anymore. Just because it's a sealed unit doesn't mean that that brake fluid can't break down just like oil, right? So we need to be flushing our brake fluids at least every couple of years. We wanna check our tire depth. We got a little tire depth gauge right here. I'll put a link to this in the description. You can get this on Amazon, but you can also pick this up pretty much any 
automotive parts store in town will have these for a few bucks. Now you can use one of these shred depth tools or you can do the penny test. I'm not gonna go into details on the penny test. You can Google that. Uh, it's pretty creative little thing that they do with the penny, uh, but you can figure that out. Or you can buy one of these inexpensive little tools. On the motorcycle tires, we're looking for a minimum depth of two thirty seconds or one thirty seconds. Personally, I don't go any farther than two thirty seconds. So right here around this tool, you're gonna have several different things, millimeters and then inches, right? We got 30 seconds marks on here. We're gonna go to the center of the tire because that gets the most wear. We're gonna push that down just like that. And then we're gonna roll it around and we're gonna look at it. We're gonna go to the 30 seconds marks and we're showing five. This is a brand new tire. And you can do the millimeter thing and there are millimeter and 30 seconds conversion tables on Google as well. So you can do the millimeter either way. But cheap little tool, easy to check your tread depth. So when it comes to tread wear indicators, hopefully you can see this extra little rubber right here that's in the middle. This is not a tread wear indicator. That is just part of where they seam the tire together. We go back over here to the side, your tread wear indicator is right there. Hopefully you can see that little lump that's up right there. It's not on every tread. You're gonna skip a few treads, go down, there's another one. All right, so you can go around right there. They're evenly spaced around the tire. So if your tire is wore down to that indicator, replace your tire. Now keep in mind, across the different brands of tires that are on the market, not all tread wear indicators are gonna look exactly the same. So the best thing to do is look up your brand of tire on the internet and look to see where that brand puts their tread wear indicators, right? So that's the easiest thing to do to make sure you're looking at the right thing. So the next thing we wanna talk about are our controls. That's gonna cover our handlebars, levers and pedal, cables, hoses, and throttle. The biggest thing I want you to check on your handlebars is this pull on your handlebars. Make sure that your bushings in there are still good. If you can move these handlebars, you need to take this apart and get that tightened up or change out your bushing. Of course, inspect them to make sure that they're straight and all that good stuff. I mean, that's the common sense stuff, but I want you to check that you can't rock those handlebars. These have very, very little play in them because those bushings are brand new. And of course you want to check your levers. You wanna squeeze your levers. You wanna inspect your levers. You wanna inspect your cables that go into your levers on both sides brake and of course your shifter and your foot brake over here. I want you to check all of your hoses and cables that you can physically see on the bike. You can also pull your seat off and check a few under there as well. Follow the cables down the best you can without pulling a bunch of stuff off, but follow the cables and see where they touch things, where they touch other things. Make sure that they're not scraped through or rubbed through or getting ready to break. Now on the pre-16, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, down in that range, the shifter lever over here has a tendency to literally fall off the bike. We have done complete videos on this. We've talked about this rear arm and the spindle itself becoming loose and then this literally just falling off and flying off down the road. I'll put a link in the description down below on that video. So when you get to your levers, grab this. Make sure it doesn't have a bunch of wobble in here. If you do have any excess wobble in there, you need to get to Harley or get online and order a new spindle and a new rear shifter arm. There are bushings inside this. The, the pre-16 don't look like this. They're a little wider, but there's bushings in here that you can change as well. But I've done a lot of these bikes and usually it's not the bushings. I get a lot of questions. Should I change the bushing? Absolutely. You can if you want to, but that's generally usually not the problem. Check your rear one as well. Make sure that it's not super sloppy. Of course, you're gonna have some movement if this is a brand new bike and you can see that movement, but if it's super sloppy, get that fixed. That rear one is a pain. Front one, super easy, but make sure that if you got slop in it, get that thing fixed. Next thing we wanna check is our throttle. I see a lot of bikes that get new grips put on them and when I check their throttle, it's not right. On the Touring models, it's very easy on the throttle side to make this too tight or too loose. This is throttle by wire. So at the end of this down here, there's a gear and on the inside of your grip, there's a gear and those two pieces mesh together. Now it is supposed to have a little bit of slop in it and that is to ensure that you have a smooth throttle response, right? So when I kick the throttle on, it immediately kicks back and also check the roll forward function. On the touring models with the electronic cruise control, when you kick the throttle forward like that, that kills your cruise control. There's a lot of people out there that know that, and then there's a lot of people out there that don't know that. Killing it with your button or killing it with your brake or rolling the throttle forward is an option to kill your cruise control. So you want to make sure that it rolls both directions. It's not too sloppy. Saw one bike that came in when it was too sloppy, and when he would throttle on, it would just grind. It would just slide past the gears. It's because it had too much slop in it. If you got this push too tight, it's not gonna have the rebound like it's supposed to have. 
and it's all right here in the switch housing. You can loosen these bolts right here that hold the switch housing on and you can push and pull this entire system right and left and that's going to set that for you. So make sure that you got smooth operation of your throttle in both directions. So now we're gonna go on to L and that is your lights. But under that lights category, it covers a lot of things. So on the touring models, it's probably the most time consuming because let's face it, the touring models have a lot of lights and they have a lot of wires and all that stuff needs checked. Now you do wanna check on your battery, especially if your bike's been left outside during the cold month. You wanna pop your seat off, pop that top cover off and look at the terminals. Make sure they're not all corroded and nasty. Make sure everything is clean and make sure everything is tight. I've seen a lot of bikes start up and you take off and you get somewhere and then they won't start again because the ground is loose right so just make sure that stuff is tight on that battery and of course the lights it's very easy to do kick the bike on check the headlight low beam high beam check your turn signals front and rear the touring models have a lot of lights available for them especially turn signal style lights you can have them on the lowers you can have them on the fairings you can have them on the rear you can have them on saddlebags on the back of the saddlebags side of the saddlebags if you have any of those make sure that you check all of those lights. On any of your lights, I want you to visually look at them, look inside of them, make sure they're not full of moisture. Uh, you wanna check the lenses, right? The lenses themselves should be watertight when you put them on there, so you shouldn't be getting a lot of moisture in these headlights. Make sure they're not cracked, chipped, anything like that. Make sure everything's working correctly, and that goes for the rear of the bike as well. We wanna be checking our mirrors. Make sure that they're tight. Make sure that they're in place. I've seen a lot of, uh, gonna say cheaper eBay Amazon mirrors that are put on bikes and they're just kind of sloppy so they may be tight you're riding along and next thing you know the mirrors moving on you right you usually see that in the cheaper mirrors just gonna be honest with you um, not all of them are like that but I've, most of the ones that I've seen actually move while you're riding were just cheap mirrors the biggest thing I want you to do with your mirrors is freaking clean them get all the fingerprints and crap and dust and dirt off of them you only have two and those things are showing you everything that's behind you so let's keep those things clean uh, we talked about the wiring you know most of the wiring that you want to check on these bikes there's not a whole lot most of the stuff is hidden on the touring models underneath the seat that go back but if you have installed anything externally or extra on the bike just make sure that you check those wires so we'll talk a little bit about oils and fluids. This is where earlier I was telling you it's very important to get a service manual for your bike, not just an owner's manual, but an actual service manual for your bike. It's gonna tell you all the fluid levels and how to check it on your specific bike. So it's important to read your service manual to find out how to check the different fluids. Some of it's standing up, some of it's on the kickstand, some of it's hot, some of it's cold. So make sure to check your service manual before you check your fluids to make sure that you're doing it properly, right? You don't wanna overfill or underfill something. And if you need to do a three hole oil change, I've got several of those videos on my YouTube channel. I'll link those down in the description as well. We got. And before I get a comment, no, changing your own fluids is not going to void your warranty at all. I'm gonna leave it at that. Of course, on the other side of the bike, you've got two dipsticks over there for your transmission and your oil. On this side, on the clutch, you've got your clutch inspection cover right here, which you just take this derby cover off or this clutch inspection cover off. And you got kind of a notch down here at the bottom where you want to look in with a flashlight and see where the fluid is on the plate, right? And I'll put a picture up here on the screen that shows you exactly where the fluid's supposed to be on that plate. So if that may help you there, you don't have to go back over to the other video and look at it. Now we're going to move on to chassis. And this part here covers a ton of stuff as well, but a lot of it is just visual checking. Of course, you want to look everywhere on your frame to make sure that you don't see any weird rubbing or anything, any uh, powder coat or paint that's missing from any kind of weird rubbing, any cracking, anything like that. That's, I mean, that's a give me. You want to check out all that stuff. So to check the front suspension, you can pretty much just sit on the bike and grab the front brake and start rocking the bike and see how much play or how quick or how slow the rebound is. Changing out your fork oil is another thing that I see a lot of people skip over. They just don't do. And it's really kind of easy to do. But that oil in there, once again, that oil breaks down and that stuff has to be drained and new oil has to be put back in. But don't skip that because it's, it's very easy to do and it, it really does control how the bike handles. On the rear of the bike, pop your saddlebags off. Get back here, look at your shocks. These are a couple of bolts on the bike that I actually physically check. Um, a couple of times a year to make sure that they're tight, especially if you're running some kind of crazy suspension like air ride or uh, a sport suspension or something like that. 
make sure that these bolts are tight on both sides. You want to check on this one, you, you want to check your belt. You want to get the rear of the bike up in the air, put it in neutral, spin the rear tire just like we did the front. When I'm checking the tire, I'll come around here and I'll check our belt and I'll check our belt pulley. We spin it, we look at the teeth on the pulley to make sure that they're not cracked or anything like that or we're not seeing excessive wear on the teeth in the pulley. Chucking the belt deflection on the bike, you can use a belt tension guide like this. It's very, just very cheap on Amazon. But we also have videos on our YouTube channel to uh, show you how to use a belt deflection tool. But that's something that you can pick up and have ready. Now the last thing you want to inspect is your stands. Your kickstand, your center stand if you have that. And that could be electric center stand, air center stand, or maybe a manual center stand with the springs. You want to make sure that the springs are tight enough to hold that bike up if you're using that center stand. So if you have the Harley Davidson Jiffy stand like this bike has, you want to make sure that everything is tight. The biggest thing on the kick stands or the side stands like this is to make sure that the spring has plenty of tension to hold the kick stand up in place where it's supposed to be. I don't know how many bikes I see going down the road with the kick stand hanging half down. That's dangerous. You get into a corner and that grabs the ground, guess what? you're going flying. Spring on the bottom right here, it's a very cheap thing that you can purchase and you can change that at home. There's no reason for your kickstand to be hanging half down because your springs wore out. On the Touring model bikes, really the only thing that I wanna add to that would I guess be kind of fall into body and chassis or fasteners. You want to make sure that your saddlebags are tight. If you're riding your bike pretty often, check those saddlebag knobs. You can still get in the forums today and still see people on touring models losing their saddlebags going down the highway. So at the end of the day, it's the rider's responsibility to make sure everything is tight on their bike. If anything falls off of your bike, it's your responsibility. I don't care who makes the part, I don't care who put the part on, it's your responsibility to make sure it is tight. So I hope this video helped you. We went down the checklist, and like I said, it's kind of a, a basic checklist. Use your own judgment. Check the things that you think that need to be checked, right? I went over the things that I specifically look for when I'm doing a pre-inspection ride, but yours may be different. Maybe you do something to your bike that I didn't cover today. Make sure that you put it in the comment section down below. I know a lot of our viewers and our subscribers actually read those comments down there. There's a lot of stuff on this list and I probably did miss a few things, uh, but yeah, that's why we have the checklist, right? Like I said, I hope this video helps, but I'm going to wrap it up. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, as always, be safe. Keep your knees in the breeze. Thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe popping up over here. And don't forget to check out the rest of the channel because we have a ton of bagger related and soft tail videos on our channel. And to get you started, maybe you can check out this one or this one. Not really gonna say anything else. You can just click one of those and take it over to another video.